I am here in sunny Barbados to see how well I can handle a spear gun underwater as we go to hunt for the invasive lionfish. <laughs> this is why they usually keep me indoors, eh? <laughs> it's like, oh, Rhea. Filmmaker taking a picture of a filmmaker taking a picture. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Pop, pop, pop. get to work the gun, right? Yeah, absolutely, if you want to. Now, the thing about lionfish is, because they have no natural predator, they really don't have anything to be afraid of. So often when divers approach them, they just sit still, so they're quite easy to shoot in that regard. Okay, everybody's like, well, don't touch the lionfish, they're poisonous. So What's what? the deal? So lionfish are venomous, not poisonous, which means that the toxin that they carry is only in the spine of the fish. So once you remove that spine, the rest of the fish is perfectly safe to handle, perfectly safe to eat. Once we spear them, uh, they have about 45 spines all over their body and only about 18 of those spines actually have the venom. So it's less than half of their spines contain this, this neurotoxic venom. Getting stung is not a lot of fun. Uh, I've been stung. Oh, so you've been stung. You've been there. Multiple times, unfortunately. Uh, and it's always the diver's fault. It's never the lionfish. The coral, sea fan, anything like that, we're just not going to be looking to touch it, especially things like anemones. Again, you touch that, you'll, you'll be in a bit of pain, you'll have itching, a bit of swelling, stuff like that. So the general kind of thing is just to look out for anything that's kind of like orange in color, anything that's sort of bright and vibrant. But general rule, just don't touch the coral whatsoever. Yeah. Okay? Lionfish typically will be anywhere from 10 feet deep to as deep as you can possibly dive. Now lionfish pretty much like any kind of structure. So any rock that stands out a bit bigger than the rest or has a mushroom kind of shape to it, basically something that's nice and big, especially something that has some space underneath it for them to hide out during the day uh, and kind of get their shelter. I try to get comfortable with the gun and give myself the motivation that the only predators these little buggers have is me. And they release about two million eggs a year. These babies continue to gobble up all the important critters biologically designed to keep our reefs healthy. Fishing is definitely my new favorite sport, but it's going to take me about a few dozen more times to get as skilled as Alex. Where'd you grow up? Here. Like on the island? Like there. Like right here. Yeah, like around the corner. <laughs> Did you go fish and just eat fish all the time? As if you stayed on the beach long enough, a friendly neighborhood fisherman would pull his boat up in the surf, and then all the kids would try to help him push it up the sand, and if you yeah. pushed it up the sand for him, he would give you some fish. We'd all bring it back to the beach. So, because we live literally on the beach, you literally would cross the street, grab some stuff, and run back to go with this fish that you just got. So, breadfruit, seasonings from the garden, a little onion. We had to have like a big 
growth on the beach. Like you got the fish from the water and then you're gathering like yeah. whatever's in the garden. So, but there's a breadfruit tree right there within my line of sight. Like if you look back, you'll see it. This is Barbados. Yep, nothing like roast breadfruit. So I'm gonna take off the top and go around. Oh, okay. That's the heart. So you wanna cut away till you see meat. Now for the magic. I'm gonna pop that butter right on the inside. Ooh. Now, your Bajan. Bajan sauces. This hot sauce. Yes. We're gonna put Thanks, it in friends. our breadfruit. Yeah. You're gonna secure the top oh, back I on. Oh, I love this going back on. Now we're just gonna put that bad boy right in the fire. Beautiful. Where it's hot. But lionfish, this I is know. not a traditional Barbadian fish. No, because you little buggers aren't supposed to be here. You're an invasive species. And as such, I've taken liberties with its preparation. Uh oh. Yes. So I'm going to get me some fresh banana leaves. How long do your banana leaves stay fresh for? You, do you do it day of? You can freeze them, actually. You, you can? You can freeze them if sure. you like. I might be trying to take some home to freeze. Yeah. This is broadleaf time. So you know oh the my gosh, I just teeny. smelt it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The little Holy teeny. moly. Sorry, scotch this is bonnet. a scotch bonnet. Note that I have not done anything to it, and the reason for that is because I just want the flavor. I don't want all the heat. I'm gonna get some onion. I'm gonna chop enough for all of the fish. Go, 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 go. Gotta have the garlic. You put a little bit of that on there so you can see it. I love all the color. And it has a very soft white flesh on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, it's really flexible. Like it takes flavor well. It cooks well. So I'm encouraging everybody to just, you know. Gosh, that's a big fish. Get in there. I'm gonna wrap her up. Nice and tight. Now we're gonna steam this packet. I'm gonna leave a little space at the top. And then I'm gonna do what we would normally do. We're going to steam it with this salt water. This is brilliant. Uh -huh. And we're golden. Rest it right here. Awesome. Bingo. Here's the good stuff. This is why chefs have kitchen and stove. Ah. Uh, huh. That just makes them lazy. <laughs> All you chefs with your convenient <laughs> stoves. <laughs> this is why they usually keep me indoors, eh? <laughs> what we should have here is wow, some nicely steamed lion Perfect. Fish. You just go for it. Grab a piece and you get some salt water. And there you go. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. It's all cooked. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm. See, it didn't need anything. No seasoning, nothing. Just fish. Mm. Mackerel, lion fish, my two favorite, hands down. So mm. to catch both today was quite a nice result. It was, yeah, it's got all that flavor in it. Lime fish is like buttery. Yum! You when you were little, did you eat yeah. the mackerel roast, like this? Roast, yes, roast everything. He taught roast me. and everything. Yeah. Every Your dad butter. taught you? I know. Fire, mackerel, sweet potato, you everything in the fire. Everything in the fire. So, let's take a peek inside of our breadfruit. That looks pretty tasty to me. Oh, butter. Awesome. Look at that. We're going to share some happiness and joy today. Woo! Some roasted breadfruit. Rhea, thank you so much. You're welcome. This is an honor to be able to do this. Whoa, it's hot. <laughs> As she burns me, she's like, <laughs> No. Mmm. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Right there. Look, Daddy. Taste that. There we it's go. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I've traveled now from the Northwest Caribbean coastline to the rugged East Atlantic. 
I'll grab one. <laughs> They're cooking me up the very popular flying fish sandwich. The flying fishes are not so fish, whereas everyone comes all over the world looking for it. It's really nice, it's a very delicate fish. So you have it here in an egg wash batter. And we're going to eat this sandwich with french fries. Yeah. With a flying fish sandwich. Oh yeah. Cheers. Mmm. Oh my god. There's something about fish sandwiches. They're just so homey and satisfying, but you kind of trick your mind and you feel like you're doing something healthy. <laughs> it is fried as f it's not healthy. The final stop on my Barbados tour ends on the southern tip. With my new best friend, Mood. Uh, well, well, well. <laughs> oh, to be able to drink that no, beer. She ain't need no man. <laughs> she ain't need no man. And you have hot sauce too, right? <laughs> Pepper sauce on the macaroni pie under the bed of grilled marlin. Oh. Mood runs Ocean Spray Apartments and Rentals, but his real passion is at his diversity driven jungle farm. We make a quick stop at Holder's Farmer's Market to check out what else is growing in Barbados. Because that's part of our lifestyle choices. Yeah. It's kind of like linked back to very, very early Caribbean childhood experiences with coconut. Really? You know, and molasses and things like that. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And only about 3% of people that did the survey said they heard from those Perfect. 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 I think there is more rain out there. So look at there is something other than an old chain. Looking for this and this was there. Forest and farm. That's right. I did it right. So the idea is agroforestry. So we're going to keep the forest and not do monoculture. But we're going to work with the forest and where we have some open spaces or we clear some invasive trees and we re replace them with productive fruit trees. Do uh, you think there's anything out there like we can pull? Um, well, this is actually unfortunately not the fruit season. I'm no. always the wrong place. Wrong time. And I know for sure we didn't get ginger, turmeric. Oh, fun. Yeah. Because I don't think I've, you know, I guess I've seen ginger, but I've never really seen it harvested. Yeah, there's a ginger flower, really pretty. Okay. And turmeric flowers too. Oh, I don't know what those are. Yeah, yeah. perfect. So I get to see stuff, play with stuff, and we're going to see how long it takes since it's the first day ever in the five years I've done this show that I've ever been out in the field without my boots. I have sandals on and he's got a machete so we'll see at what point <laughs> the toe comes off my money's on the right big toe <laughs> all, right, all right let's go have fun
And here is our coconut repository. I've been going around and, and finding different strains of coconut. So mm. wait, mm -hmm. different strains just from Barbados? Just from Barbados initially. That's how you replant coconuts? Yeah, we get the seedlings and pot them out. The actual pot, like the coconut. So you got a coconut up there? Yeah. In the tree? Yeah. We, we don't pick them. We let them stay in the tree, get really right, they drop Fall. down. Right. And then those are the we'll ones keep you... them and then they will germinate and then you will put them in a pot. And you can see the banana flowers, Look, right? it's opening up! Yeah. Oh gosh, I have to get a photo. You want to do that? It's like a Jim Henson Muppet. So what you'll do, you'll come here and you'll pick these. It's like a lotus. And you eat this. You eat it. And you cook it? Yeah, you cook it in coconut milk with some turmeric. I'm going to try it even though it's bitter. This is no, the no, part no, you want, no? No, no, not that. You want, yeah, no. you get rid of yeah. these. So I'll just take that part off. <laughs> mm. On the front end, it almost has like a cucumber. Yeah, but there's oh yeah. It's still there. better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. You weren't kidding. But on the front, it's like, like a cucumber. Yeah. What you would do in a commercial farm, you'd only allow seven hands to grow one two three four five six seven okay you're gonna probably discard this because you want the banana to be a certain size and a certain shape in commercial banana production we waste a lot of bananas because of standardization because we want things to look the yeah, same yeah, be the yeah. same taste the same and then and you what also we lose pick them is everything everything wow. it's a purple banana and we moved from 200 varieties of bananas say 50 years ago to the commercialization of bananas only Cavendish, and now we are facing a um, an extinction problem with bananas. In my country, in the U.S., we know one banana. Yeah, Cavendish. One. That's all we know. Yeah, yeah. And yet, and so here, here I am seeing all of these different About eight varieties. eight types of bananas in in this in this farm. Kelly, if you want a new job, you got one here. <laughs> Kelly gonna be the, gin, the turmeric and the ginger picker. <laughs> I can handle that. I'm happy with that. Look at this beautiful mud. It is like clay. Yeah, it's a clay, yeah. Actually, it's a red clay, and that's how Barbados got its Amerindian name from. Uh, Ichigarania means um, red soil with white teeth. And the white teeth were the waves, and the red soil is this red, red clay. And that's the original name of Barbados. Now we're dirty. It was just like an appetizer at the beginning. I think this is pretty good. Yes. I think we're ready to transport this. And then the, this flower is amazing. Boom. Boom and boom. So all of this is ginger here. Oh, holy moly ravioli. So I make a ginger chocolate, we make a ginger molasses mm. biscuit, and it's actually very good. It's anti-inflammatory. It's very good for you. It's, I should be eating a ton of it right now. So we're gonna dig some ginger. Yay! I love ginger though. It's one of my favorite um, I ingredients. don't have that for ginger, and I need to. Whoa! Yay. My first ever oh my ginger harvest. Wow. wow. Can you believe that? Wow. How long have you, since you were kids, right? Ginger, always. Yeah, always. It's, it's a big part of our cuisine. You make drink ginger beer. We're going to experiment with that eventually to ferment the ginger to make ginger beer. That would be a great yeah. thing to come out of Barbados. Yeah. Foot. That's what we used to make all those things. That's the sad part. And, and what we are doing right now is reinventing history, which is unfortunate, right? Because this should have been documented, recorded, so that we could just be doing oh, yeah. it rather than having to relearn all of these processes. We did it. Thanks, guys. Look, and I got some dirt under my fingernails. My feet are muddy. I stink a little. My fingernails are dirty. It's real. I'm happy. Yeah. This, this is, is real. happy. Yeah, this is real. I've been to church today. Yes, thank you. <laughs> when I first started going to Barbados, I expected a lot of crowds and a lot of resorts. And I think that's there. I never really went to those places. I also found food I could gather, meals over fire, and people passionate about their culture, celebrating what gives their island a lot of heart.
on this season of the original fair. I want to see you read it. Well, at this point, I can't predict what this adventurous path will lead me into next. <laughs> <laughs> or how to survive a show. Right, exactly.